She's got it, he's got it, we all got it.
and I'm like, I'm trying to show you shit here, guys. Like, they did one point two. Yes, good afternoon and welcome to Kitchener Park. It's round 15 of the Chaos BRL Premier Competition. It's the Winner Manly Juniors. They are hosting the Brighton Roosters. I'm Cameron Aker and I'm joined by Taylor Brown for commentary this afternoon. Good afternoon, Taylor. Another big one here in the context of both teams' final pushes. Absolutely. Both of these sides probably haven't had the seasons that they wish they were going to have come you know, January, February of this year. And they're, they're trying to make that final push, as you mentioned, towards the finals period. So we have a look at the ladder here in front of us. You can see Roosters on seven, Seagulls on six. Mm. Uh, so it, it's very close there at the top at, at the, in that uh, standpoint. If Roosters don't win today, they can pretty much kiss finals goodbye. Um, and, and the Seagulls, they need to try and stay in touch with the diehards there. So it's a very interesting matchup and uh, with massive... Uh, Massive, uh, pro uh, what word am I looking for there? Uh, Massive, sorry ladies and gentlemen, this is the most unprofessional thing <laughs> we've ever done on air. <laughs> you, Massive, you stumped me now. Yeah, well. I know. <laughs> anyway. Massive, Massive ramifications. Ramifications, I was going to say implications, implications for the top yeah. five. Fair uh, enough. <laughs> we'll run with that. We'll, <laughs> we'll run, run with one. it. Oh, but yeah, it's, I, I agree, Taylor. It's a big match. And you've recently spoke about this Seagull side that saying they're a giant awaiting to be awoken. And you'd think if they are going to push for finals, it's this game they need a win. Yeah, they have to. And it's no use being the side with all the talent, with, with the old experience heads and everything that Wynnum possess. Um, they have speed out wide. They really have a tough forward pack. There's no point being that team in the competition if you're not going to make finals because mm. that's when a team like that comes alive, Cam. That's when they're at their absolute best, when the stakes are high. So they need to... They Need to, they really need to go this afternoon, otherwise it may be just about over for Wynnum for 2022 as well. So reserve grade just finishing up here. We've actually got a while left if that clock's right, Taylor. Seven minutes to go in this reserve grade match. Um, and as we have a look at the Wynnum Manly Juniors side for this afternoon. Again, we thank our platinum sponsor, Chaos. As we head over to the Wynnum side, it's Dane Spencer at fullback, Brandon Jaconia. And Christopher Humphreys on the wings. Talita Stanford and Ryan O'Keefe are the centre pairing. Chris Green and Braden Whitaker are the halves. ATG, Adam Tumavave, Gerard, Savanta Hedi and Samsoni Potamani is the front row and a back row of Mitch McMillan, Rakeem Uda out in the back row this afternoon along with Nafosa Malatoa locking the scrum. Ethan Unicombe, Kyle Coghill, Blake Pyle and Caleb Thompson is on the bench. So a strong uh, side there, Taylor, especially having the likes of Kyle Coggill on the bench there and um, try, trialling, I suppose, Rakeem Uda in the back row there. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got players like Ethan Unicum, who's come on. He's done a really good job for Wynnum over the past couple of seasons. And he's uh, he's on the bench. You know, Blake Pyle's had a really good season 2022. Um, Savanti Hitty locks it all together for them there at Hooker. Uh, so I'm very interested to see how they perform this afternoon. We all know how good Dane Spencer, Brandon Jaconia are. So, yeah, look, if they can pull it together this afternoon, it's going to be a very, very interesting matchup down here at Kitchener. Let's head over to the Brighton Roosters side and have a look at how, at how they line up this afternoon. A late withdrawal there, Taylor, and with Josh Behag um, actually not playing fullback this afternoon, so they've got Brock Keel there. Yeah, I spoke with Josh just as he was walking off the park, halfway through his warm-up, warm -up, and he's torn his pec minor last weekend. He thought he could possibly get through a game. He just tried it out. He was running through his warm-up. He had a few twinges and just thought it's it's probably not smart at this stage of the season to be trying out injury. So he's gone back inside. He's having a hot shower, and he'll be spectating this game like you and I. So the rest of that side, Junior Ratuva on the wing and Jalen Rowetti on the other sting. Harrison Mekendo and Kalala Meni in the centres. Brock Nelson and Jaya Tapia. Uh, are the halves. Brock Brody Baker, Alex Crust and Connor Brebner, the front row a back row of Pio Nakabuwai Noah Lotui, Samson Graham and the bench of Mitch Ayling, Ambrose Fenn, Leighton Fainu and Sione Kivalu and both of those two last two names I mentioned there in the 16 and 17 uh, having their debut this afternoon Taylor coming up from the 20s competition. Yeah, it's a, it's a really big time for those two young men and it, what a game to do it at Kitchener Park against the Wyndham Junior. So good luck to both of those young men this afternoon. I'm sure they'll do well. I hope their families are either here or listening to our sultry voices this afternoon as they watch their, uh, their family members go through the big trial here at Kitchener Park. It's what a day for their families.
Yeah, so just on your screens now is just the end of this uh, reserve grave competition. It's currently 14 points to 14, so a frantic finish here for both sides trying to get the W as Win and Manly go close there. However, Taylor, um, just looking at these these stats of the competition so far. Actually, we'll go over to you. We'll go we'll go around the grounds and have a look at some of the scores this afternoon in the competition. Yeah, big scores in the competition this afternoon. There's the Karina uh, Tigers have absolutely demolished South Juniors 60 to 22 over there at Leo Williams Oval. So that's a, a big win yes, for the Tigers and win. one they much needed. Then Belimba and Bean Lee. Well, they've had a draw. 28 all draw over first there at Barramoral. Yep, yeah, okay. first draw for the year. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big result over there between those two sides. And then Valleys 38 have defeated the Normanby Hounds 38 to 24 at Emerson Park. So, very important for the Valleys to keep winning the diehards if they want to keep the Wynnum Juniors and, of course, the Brighton Roosters away. But, well, we'll solve that equation this afternoon. Yeah, and. No, um that, that Hound side there going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Valleys, they've been showing some good form of late, haven't they? They went they went all right against West last week as well. Yeah, they have. It's just unfortunately it's one of those situations where almost last year, I think, it was the Brighton Roosters. They started turning on towards yeah. the back end of the year. It was just too little too late. Yeah. And, and the same can be said for the Normby Hounds with only three rounds left of the competition after this afternoon. It's just a little too late for the Normby Hounds, who were one of the best of in season 2021. Okay, let's go to a few stats of the competition uh, for the year so far. The top five try scorers and point scorers of the competition. We'll start with tries. It's Daniel Ayres from Belimba sitting on top of the pile on 14 tries. Mitchell Butler 13 by himself, solely in second. Zach Croft in third on 12. Sorry, Butler was 13, Zach Croft's 12. And then we've got Joe Wacker level on 11 and a few players on 9 and Justice Utato and one featuring here this afternoon, Harrison Mikendo. And although the Brighton Roosters haven't picked up... Uh, as many wins that they would have liked recently. Harrison Mickendo's really been a shining light. He's, he's been scoring a bag of tries, and um, he's just been really confident out, out wide there for the Roosters. Yeah, they've they've had a season where, although they haven't had their best year, they have had some players graduate moving on into the Host Plus Cup. One that I can think of, top of mind, Cody Hunter, yeah. who's such an integral part of this side. Uh, and it, it just shows there is a pathway here from the Brighton Roosters through to now the NRL at the Dolphins with Cody Hunter. And Harrison Mckindo, if he keeps up form like this, this, there's absolutely no reason why he can't follow the same footsteps. Absolutely. So let's have a look at the points. Obviously, the man, uh, everyone's fan favourite, Mitchell Butler, sitting top of the pile for points. 162 for him in first place. Second is Connor Miller with 112. Then we go a bit lower to Simon Britton Snowden, Daniel Ayres, Brandon Jaconia, who will feature here for Winner Manly. Um, on the wing this afternoon. He's on 56 points, starting to roll up there. He was obviously the player of the competition um, last year, Taylor, uh, leading point scorer, leading try scorer as well, I think, last year and ended up getting the player of the year. Maybe he's slowly starting to find a bit of form. He did start the season a little bit slowly, but he's starting to pick things up now. Yeah, it's got a large uh, portion of that is to do that Wynnum have had a similar start themselves. Mm. Yeah. Last year, Wynnum were, were one of the best sides in the competition, bowing out in the preliminary final, the grand final qualifier. Uh, but, you know... Brandon Jaconia, he's, uh, once Wyndham start firing and he starts firing, he's hard to stop. Yeah. You know, he's also playing wing this year, being pushed to the side by Dane Spencer. Mm. Last year he had his hand on the ball a lot more and was scoring a lot more tries. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those situations where if you're a finisher, you can't finish what hasn't been started. And it's, <laughs> it's just not being started yeah. Yeah. for the Wyndham Manly uh, Seagulls. Yeah, just a uh, score update if anyone is interested in this reserve grade game. It's, it's Brighton Roosters. They just scored a handy try with only two minutes to go on the clock. They lead 18 points to 14. So a big kick coming up here, but that win's going to hold it back. Let's speak about that win, Taylor. How much does this play affect to both of these sides this afternoon? It's not too bad at the moment, but I feel like it will pick up. Oh, the doctor, other win of doctor coming <laughs> straight off the sea down here at Kitchener Park. Yeah, it's it's one of the most spoken about situations in, in all sort of Brisbane Rugby League. It's the win that you get down here at Kitchener Park, and mm. that's certainly going to wreak havoc this afternoon. I have to wonder, uh, with Wynnum, Dane Spencer, he'd be used to this sort of breeze. He'd be training in it all the time. But Brock Kell, you know, BHAG, he's an experienced head. Yeah. He's someone that's had a lot of Host Plus Cup experience. One of the best wingers for the Redcliffe Dolphins in that competition for a long time. And it's Brighton are really lucky to have him down here in their squad at fullback. Um, he's very experienced. He would have done fine under these conditions. I do worry a little bit for Brock Kell. Can he hold up to those standards? Um, and will they test him early on? I, th I think mm. they do, Ken. I think they do too. You can sort of fill it up. You might catch it a little bit through our microphones as the afternoon and, and the early evening comes 
along as this is this wind blows over Kitchener Park. But yeah, I do agree. Brock Kell there, he must be preparing himself to to get ready for those ones early on here. We're starting to see a bit of the calls in the NRL. They call it the Burton bomb now hitting that belly of the ball and getting it as high as you possibly can. I dare say we might see a few of that, especially early on here, just to test the back three of both sides, I, I dare say. Yeah, I don't know if you can call it the Burton bomb. <laughs> it's, been, it's been around a well, long no time one, yeah, before yeah. Matt Burton. Yeah. Uh, but he has. He seemed to have perfected it, and that, that kick in Origin 2 that he put up was just impossible to get underneath. And, and uh, look... You don't even have to get in the belly of the ball to do that at Kitchener Park. Yep. Just a regular kick's going to go haywire with this win. So, uh, look, I'd be looking towards that. Chris Green and Braden Whitaker, both of these players have spent a lot of time at Wynnum. Yep. They know all about this breeze, uh, and they know how to use it, and they know how it can be used. So I'd like to think that those players do use that early against Brock Kell being the late replacement at fullback. Um, Brock Kell was not originally in the 17, so I'm not sure if they, they must have pulled him out yeah. of this reserve grade side. So he's already played played at least 70 minutes of rugby league this afternoon and then they're going to say well now you got to play fullback for, yeah. in, in the BRLA grade so <laughs> big ask isn't it big <laughs> ask against his side let's see if they can get it done and that'll probably be the end of reserve grade there the Brighton Roosters will get a victory there 18 points to 14 which means we are not too far away a kickoff here in the chaos BRL premier competition Taylor just before we get to kickoff here let's highlight a few key players here ones to watch for both sides um, I'll let you start with the Brighton side and I'll pick my player from the Wyndham side. Who do you think the real key man here this afternoon is for Brighton for them to go on and get a victory? Well, I think my key man for the Brighton Roosters um, is the key man only because they need to match what Wyndham have in the middle. Mm. Wyndham Juniors have a very good forward pack. ATG, uh, Potamani, I love the, the Malatoa. He's just yeah. a workhorse that goes all day. And I think to nullify that, the aggression of Connor Brebnart needs to be very high this afternoon. He needs to have a very aggressive game and stand his ground and say, hey guys, I'm not here to be bullied, I'm not here to be pushed around. That's something we've seen from Connor Brebner in the past few years. Uh, perhaps the head, his hot head has gotten the better of him on some occasions. Uh, regularly sent to the ban, regularly been put on a report, or penalties against him, all those sorts of things. Um, but I like Connor Brebner when he brings that aggression and just holds it up a little bit more. He's, can I say, the Jared Ruia Hargraves yeah. of, the, of this yeah. team, and I think fair, that's, fair that's now a rugby league, yeah. uh, you know, everyone knows that in rugby league, the way that the JWH plays for the Sydney Roosters week in, week out with that heart and that passion. That's Connor Brebner for the Brighton Roosters. If he can bring that this afternoon and keep those penalties and errors to a minimum, I think that's going to go a long way for the Brighton Roosters. Well, you love an enforcer, don't you? Would you consider yourself an enforcer? Oh, I'm, not gonna day, go, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> I'm now a commentator. That's what I am. I'm a commentator. All uh, right, let's let's go over to the Wyndham side. So I was close to, here it is. I was close to picking Savanta Hedy. Skip at this side a few times. Um, um, uh, this year, but I, I, I'm going to lean towards Dane Spencer. You spoke about him a little bit pre-game as he's taken that jumper off um, Brandon Chaconia. I just feel like this is the time now for Dane Spencer. He obviously wants to get up into that cup side. It's a tough side to get into. We do know that. Mm. But Dane, I, I feel like this afternoon is going to be his afternoon. He can try and trouble um, these big, this big Brighton pack as fatigue sets in the, in the back end of both halves and, halves, and I think Dane Spencer might come into his own um, in, in those sort of time slots of this match. Yeah, well, one thing about Dane Spencer is that he had that preseason at the Canberra Raiders mm. before he come into, yeah. into the, the Host Plus Cup up here in Queensland. And and I just think it hasn't been his best transition. Yeah. It's very hard for players when they move so far away from home, so far away from what they know, uh, to come up and play their best football. It's something you don't see very often, and when you do, it's the great players that do it. Um, I think Dane Spencer's had that period now. He's 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 going to grow up a lot through this bare oil competition. He's been dropped. It's how he pushes through it. Uh, I, he needs to start pushing now. He needs to start moving. And the work that he's been doing behind closed doors, that's going to start to flow from the next movie six to 12 months up here in Queensland start to flourish. So you're right, Dane Spencer, he's a man to watch um, and he can turn on the afterburners in the next six to 12 months. Uh, you've got a serious rugby league player on your hands. Absolutely. We're just about set to go here. Round 15 of the Chaos BRL Premier Competition. The Brighton Roosters now making their way out onto the park. Ooh. Led by Samson Graham. Big Sammy Graham. The captaincy too. Yeah, I think he'd probably share that with Brebner, don't you think? Yeah, I, actually, Brody Baker's been a, yeah. a long-time player here um, for the Brighton Roosters, and, and uh, I think he's probably someone that I wouldn't mind seeing in the captaincy role either. See that from Brebner as he run out. You probably saw it on the screens. He's, he's hitting himself in the cheek. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's how some big men warm up to the task at hand, yeah, he's, eh? st he's still doing it out there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, look, as I said, I, I love the way that Conor Brebner plays. I really do. And it, it's such an enforcer's way of football. And he pushes himself every single time. So if he can toe that line, I think, uh, as I've mentioned, he's the key player for the Brighton Roosters this afternoon as we are wait for the Wynnum Juniors to run out. They keep us all waiting, aren't they? Absolutely. We, well, we've spoken about this a lot, but this is, I know i know we're still a while away from finals, but these games are so crucial for both sides and both sides will want to go on a run. And I feel like this is a stepping stone today for either side to set that platform and go on deep into this competition because I feel like they can both do it, but they just need to build some confidence within their squads. Yeah, well, to say that this afternoon is do or die for both sides is, is an understatement. It's probably been do or die for the last week or two for both of these teams. They need to start pushing. They need to start going. Um, and, and it's something that they haven't done yet. And this afternoon against Wynnum, against Brighton, they're essentially playing to knock each other out because the loser will go home without finals in 2022. So it's do or die football down here at Kitchener Park and uh, I can't wait to see who comes out the other end. So Wynnum Juniors just still keeping us on our toes here at Kitchener Park. Maybe they want a bit more wind to come across before they start this match, but here they Trying are now. to delay it further and further. <laughs> Let out by Savant Tahiti, so he, he will skip at the side this afternoon. No James Robinson. I think he might be in the Cup squad, Taylor. Yeah, he's currently in uh, Host Plus Cup duties. Yep. James Robinson will deserve. Um, and I, I've always loved James Robinson on, on the edge here for the juniors because he's just the he's the mainstay of the side. He's the solid rock on that edge. He, between himself and Malatoa, it's one of the best back rows in the competition. Um, so it's going to be a big task for Mitch McMillan stepping up into that jersey. He plays a little bit of centre, Mitch McMillan, but... Uh, hopefully he can live up to that number, elusive number 11 jersey of James Robinson. Okay, Chris Green with ball in hand. Now we just wait for a tee so we can get things going on. Everyone's looking around saying, hey, do we want to get this game going or what? The sidelines still don't know that they Have need a tee. Chris Green's <laughs> hair. Can we have a conversation about that? There's brown and there's some sort of blonde flary tips. Is it an attempt at dreadlocks? I don't, it just looks dirty, yeah. you know? <laughs> Well, he is Wynnum, isn't he? Everyone yeah. loves this man if you're from around this area. Isn't yeah, he's a, he's a Wynnum boy through and through, Chris he's Green. Worked at, I think he worked at the Leagues Club as well. Yeah, right, yeah. okay. I think he calls himself the he was the Prince of Cougar Eye yeah, once. Yeah, something like that. The Prince of Cougar Eye. There he is. The Prince of Cougar Eye gets us underway, and Brighton Roosters will have ball in hand first, and we go to Brody Baker, and he sets sail for the centre of the field. He's wrapped up by Savan to head it. Malatoa there as well. So to Adam Tumavave Gerard. He plays it back, and now it goes to this, well, maybe not the skipper today, but we definitely think he's a co-captain in Connor Brebner. He gets to his feet, plays it, and the Brighton Roosters start to get on a little bit of a roll here. Alex Crust at dummy half, goes back to the centre, goes to Brebner for his second hit-up, runs into some big man. Uda sort of just let him fall over the top of him. Brebner plays it back. Now we go to Tapaya, and he puts it on the boot, so a tester here for Spencer. And well evaded there by Dane. And he goes across field looking for a gap, scheming along and can't find one. He did beat one tackle in the 12 there from Latui. And now it's with Uda again. Yeah, it looks like there, yeah, there is a late change there. So Brock Kell is probably in the one jumper, but Mitch Ayling starting at fullback. Not a bad replacement. I know we spoke about Kell in the pregame, Taylor, but... Mitch Ayling's been there. He's done it before, and the ball's going towards him right now. Yeah, early kick here from Wynnum Juniors. I think they were trying to snuff out to see if, if Ayling was on his uh, on his best today, skip, stepping into the fullback role for BHAG. And they tried that early kick, and they almost got a 40-20 away from it. But uh, Mitch Ayling there, up to the task at that time. And as you mentioned, he is quite a seasoned athlete here for the Brighton Roosters. Played a lot of fullback, played a lot of hooker, played a lot of six. Uh, so, yeah, Mitch Ayling, he knows where to be and at the right times. That was many with ball in hand. Now they go to Baker. Bit of shape here out the back. Goes to the back row and Nakabuai. He's always tough to handle. There's three winning players on him and they still can't get him to ground. He stays on his feet. Now they work the right side. It's to Payer. Throws a little show and go and picks up about 15 metres for his side. Now it's last play for the Roosters. Does it go to Nelson? It goes to Crust. Now to Nelson. Puts it on the right boot. Puts it in the air again. Here comes 
Uh, the winger coming to it, taken without the ball. He was not watching the ball there whatsoever, Taylor. That was a oh, bit silly. Oh, you got oh, yes. There's Samson. smiles on everything. Oh, you can see one on Mikado on your screen. Oh, jeez, Simpson. That was terrible. Just Mate, not, not looking Have a look at the whatsoever. replay here. He's not even looking. <laughs> he doesn't even know when he's going to catch it. Oh, Chris. Chris. Oh, <laughs> Chris Humphreys. Oh. Did not have a clue. He was getting tackled. The ball was still five metres above him in the air. Yeah, he got crunched. <laughs> he got crunched. And lucky he didn't hit him harder because it probably would have been a, a yeah. 10 in the bin yeah. situation because <laughs> no ice for the ball at all, just all for the man. But anyway, the result is the same, Cam. Wyndham Juniors now into their own half. Yeah, it gives them a, a big opportunity here to try and post first points. That run was Malatoa. Now it goes to Tumavave Gerard. He ball plays out the back and... The lead runner there is tackled about 30 metres out from the try line. Savant so to Hedy now. Goes to the left and hands it off to the front row forward there and Potomani. Potomani 20 out from the try line. Plays it back to Savant. Savant goes to Green. Green now to Uda. Uda looking for some space. Put a little goosey on. Now a late offload. Jaconia. He puts a goosey on. Steps. Oh, jinx. Well done, Brandon. Oh. He opens the scoring for Winner Manly Juniors. That's some nice footwork and some nice play from Winner Manly. Yeah, a bit of something out of nothing there for the Wyndham Juniors. We'll just have a look at the replay. Rakeem Outer, sort of jink and a step, makes contact, gets the ball around his opposite number, straight into the hands of Brian O'Keefe. Chris Green, early ball. Good idea. That's why you've got out of there. Just over his opposite number. And then Jaconia, oh. beats Naka Boy and Ailing with ease, it seems. Just elusive footwork. Agility and speed to burn. What a player he is. Credit to Mitch Ayling, he, he, he still held his own there, but Brandon Giacconi is just too, too classy on his feet there. The goosey into the right foot, you love to see it. Now Chris Green will line up to try and make this four points into a six-point ball game. Four points to zero here, BRL TV on the Chaos BRL Premier Competition. It's a great start from Wynnum, and in the end there, Taylor Brown, that's a costly penalty taking out... Um, Chris Humphreys earlier on, which enabled Wyndham to get up this end of the field. Yeah, look, I think you just need to move on from that. I don't believe the defensive set was really that bad for Brighton at all. It was just this one-on-one -on -one miss here. Uh, it's, it's from the inside. It's, it's, it's uh, Jay Tapia, and he just needs to get his hands around the ball and out of pushes through that tackle and gets it away. So, yeah, not necessarily... You know, the worst set defensively. It's just that one-on-one -on -one miss and, and Wynnum make them pay. Nice strike from Green. Takes us out to six points to zero here. Wynnum leading the Brighton Roosters. Let's see how they bounce back on this one, the Brighton Roosters. And let's see if Wynnum Manly come that way again because we spoke about him, how dangerous he is, Brennan Giaconia. He's got the trainer with him now, so keep an eye on that. Maybe he's just getting some instructions saying go that way again, Brandon, and do the same thing. Ailing. Gets us back underway, and there's a little mid-range kickoff. It's bouncing around and fielded by Green. He hands it off to, to Mavave Gerard. Baker's in the tackle. Forward, oh, pass. forward pass. It was kind of a late call, which caught me off guard, but that is not the way you want to start your set after points, yeah. Taylor Brown. Just as they start rolling through their processes and... Tumavave Gerard, obviously a bit of a slow play the ball. And Malatoa just overruns his man there. Unfortunate from Malatoa and to Tahiri. But it is what it is. Brighton with an immediate opportunity to hit back. And I love a scrum player. Hopefully they bung one on. We've seen a lot uh, this year. The team's holding the ball in the back of the scrum, trying to catch him offside. And we see a lot of scrum tries as Nelson goes to the left. And he finds many. And he's one-on-one -on -one out there. Stanford, great defense yeah, by Stanford. Stanford. That'll be a good battle to watch as this match progresses. Play on now. They work the middle. Latui gets some 10 out from the try line. Crust goes to the left hand side. It's three on three there. Nelson just didn't have much going on. Throw to dummy. Whitaker was there in defense. So to Dane Spencer in the line. Now they come back to the right. It goes to Baker. Baker's got Brebner with him. He just settles it. No, he doesn't. He throws an offload that no one was ready for. And eventually it's picked up by Brebner. But they're losing meters now. Good defense from Wynnum. Crust. They're going to go left again. It's Nelson demanding the ball. He goes to Many, getting him... Or trying to get him one-on-one -on -one with Stanford out there again. They do a good job. Crust. Baker. 
So Paya, Ailings there, puts it on the boot, well fielded by Spencer and well defended from Wynnum. And here goes Spencer, just wrapped up by Ailing. Oh, beautiful defensive work by Ailing there. If he didn't grab a hold of Spencer, he was going 90 metres to score for sure. So beautiful work there from the stand-in fullback. But not too much shown there from Brighton in attack there, Taylor. Do you think that's worrying signs as this match goes on? Yeah, I think they got a little bit lost when the ball came out the back. Mm. Uh, I don't believe yeah. Brody, but I think Brody should have held it there because yeah. they were laying a point to try and throw something against the winner defence and ask some questions. So um, they did test that that right hand edge defence of the of the Seagulls. It didn't really go their way. They defended well, so that question's been answered. What questions do they have next? Malatoa hitting some Sam solid defence. Samson Graham stiffens up the middle perfectly. Savanta head in. Now Brighton Roosters, they are getting up quickly in this set. That was a good defensive set. Nice kick from Green, though. Look at this one swirl around. Ailey's got some work to do to trail back and get to it. He picks it up on his try line. And here come the Wynnum defence as Ailing runs into them. Ooh. Gets away from one just. Might have been shoulders. Referee agrees. Yeah, look, I, I thought that might have been a little bit high there, but... Uh, I've been wrong before. It sounds like I'm wrong here. Junior Retuva takes it from Hooker. Correct me if I'm wrong. Junior Retuva, did he have a crack at the Warriors this year? Did, uh, has he had an NRL debut? I, he has had an NRL yeah. debut. I'm not sure if it was been this year or last year. So right now, ball comes loose. Referee's going to say play on. They were all appealing for, a, I think they wanted a strip there or a knock on or something. Savant's going to pinch some metres now out of dummy half. So Wynnum going on the attack again. Yeah, they were appealing for it, but it looked like it just might have come out of contact, so. Yeah. Whitaker goes to McMillan. 20 out from the trial line now, a winner Manly. Six points to zero, they lead. Potamani just takes a settler on that occasion. Tahiti. Malatoa, out the back, green, short to outer. Outer's got through again, got to lay it offload, and Spencer. Spencer scores winner Manly second here. And they're liking this left-hand side, Taylor Brown. Yeah, they are. Rakeem Outer, uh, the move from centre into the second row. I was unsure of it myself because he's, he's so good in that centre three-quarter position. But he's proven me wrong on two occasions already to start off this match. Chris Green taking the ball all the way to the line, isolating the Roosters' defence here. It was a good run to start it all off. Forwards using together at the back. And their short ball... Just had P.O. Nakabuai a little bit out of the line, just uh, causing a, a, a bit of a hole in that defensive pattern. Rakeem out, it goes straight through, and then Dane Spencer, like all good fullbacks, backing up on the outside for a try. So there's that man, Dane Spencer. You needed him to, uh, you needed him to be there. You needed him to have a big game. He's certainly having a wow of one already. Well, Chris Green knocked that first one over with ease, I thought, Taylor, but he's sacked himself already, and Brandon Jaconia will take the kicking duties again. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe Chris Green carrying a little niggle from some, some of the contacts that we've seen on him early in this match, so just decided to give it up. Chris Green's a veteran of this, of this Wynnum organisation. He doesn't need to prove any points by being a goal kicker. Happy to hand it off to the young buck, I reckon. We hope you enjoy the broadcast wherever you are watching on here. And thanks to our platinum sponsor, Chaos. A few people watching on. Taylor, supporting the debutantes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and uh, Leighton, Finau and Sione, I, I can't wait to see them come on the field and make their debuts. Maybe a little bit quicker than anticipated. If Wyndham keep tr scoring tries, they might want to start something new and throw them on the paddock with some fresh legs. But we'll see what happens. I know Andrew Wynyard wouldn't be happy with the start at all. So, Ailing to get us back underway here. Winner Manly leading 12 points to zero. They do this a lot. They do those sort of mid-range kickoffs. And again, it's Mikendo one-on-one with O'Keefe there. But O'Keefe did a great job under that ball with pressure on. Mikendo might have been offside there. He might get away with one here. They're dragging him towards the sideline. He remains in the field of play here. What it does do is create a bit of chaos, a bit of uncertainty. And, and you know, it's just one of those things in rugby league. You think, oh, they're just going to kick off and go there. We'll start our set. Uh, but they're trying to disrupt the patterns there of Winner. I don't mind it at all. Adam to Mavabe Gerard now. Middle of the field. It's a good run from the big man. Stands in the tackle. They finally get him down. Baker was in there. Savan out of dummy half again. Very classy out of there. It's last tackle now for Wynnum. 
Chris Green jumps into the hooker position, goes to Whitaker. Whitaker, little dummy, was tackled as he was kicking, but he got it away. And Ailing drops it backwards, trying to use Ratuva here. And Junior Ratuva now into the line, and he's wrapped up by Savanta Hedy. Much better set there after points from Winham. Yeah, it was it was a much better set from Winham. Just using their their middlemen up the middle to create a little bit of space, and Tahiri goes for a dart as well. So Brighton Roosters back against the wall at the moment. Green in the tackle here, trying to drive the Roosters back. And Rowetti, Nakabuai now into Green again. Green's up high and slows the tackle down with ATG down low. So Brighton, it's all in front of them now. Bredner's going to run at Green again. Targeted him in that one. Green went reeling out of the tackle, but stays on his feet. Brebner wants a penalty. Plays it back to Crust. Now it goes to Tapia. Inside the 40, he puts it on the boot, but it might go straight down the throat of the try scorer Dane Spencer. And he feeds Humphreys. And Humphreys goes off his right foot and over to the side of the Brighton Roosters defence. And Nelson's there over the top in defence. Yeah, Wyndham just aiming up in defence, really. I know I know Chris Humphreys went reeling out of that tackle with Brebner, uh, but all in all, it was a pretty good set. Mm kept the Brighton Roosters side with about a 20 metre gain so they're doing really well both sides of the football at the moment the juniors. Spencer with that run. Winner Manly still leading 12 points to zero here. A little short play. No he didn't throw it. McMillan was coming through. Slowish play the ball there. Go back to Green again. Just outside the 40 he puts it on the boot. He found a bit of space but Ailing manages to get there on the full. Now Ailing with the return. Tries to run away from Alda, but can't get away from O'Keefe. A yeah, good kick return there from Mitch Ailing. They need all the metres they can get. They're going to be up to around the 40 metre mark off this first hit up. So that's the sort of difference just a bit of energy can make. There's a good run from Rowetti as well coming in for some dirty work. It's Cross now to Mikindo. Some more of those tough carries coming out of your end. They're over the halfway line now though. Haven't seen too much of Mikindo in this clash so far, yeah. but he wins his side of penalty there. Yeah, I thought so myself, just Potamani. So the opportunity was there to put his hands on the face, and he, and he did it. Now, Wynnum, going to have to defend this one out. Quick tap from Mikindo. Now it's Nakabuai out of dummy half. Need the runner, opts to go himself. Malatoa there in defence. Big chance here for Brighton to try and get on the board. It's Brebnar, ball playing to his front row forward partner in Baker. Baker takes the tackle. Cameron Anker and Taylor Brown here with you on the commentary duties. Now it's Brebner. Brebner straight forward into the heart of the Win Winham defence. He's only a couple of metres short of the try line here. Watch Crust out of dummy half. Here he is. Short play to Graham. Graham spinning and turning. Samson Graham for the line. Does not get there. Oh, oh yes, no. he does. Or does he? No, he's lost it over the line. Knock on there for Samson. He must have been very, very close in order to reach out. Referee right on the spot, though, to make the call, oh. and he's called knock on. Yeah, straight away the referee called that as well. He had a great view of it. Almost bagging their first points there, Taylor. Looked a lot better in that set, didn't they? Yeah, and it was just a lot of hard running. Uh, they mixed up through the middle. Brebner, beautiful little tip on to Brody Baker. Then just a show and go himself. Short ball at the line from Crust to Graham. So I don't mind that. They're holding up Wynnum at, at the ruck, and if they had the opportunity to go wide, they might have after that just... You know, compress the defence and pull them in exactly where you want them in order for your men outside the speedy guys to have a bit of space. Now it's O'Keefe. Nakabuai missed him. Mikindo says, come here and I'll drag you backwards though. And they drag him about five metres. And they've stopped the halt there and win him. Good defence from the Roosters. Some big contact again and they're driving him backwards here. There's five of them in the tackle. It's only about a metre out from his try line. They want to get up again here, Brighton, trying to force an error here to Mavave. Gerard takes that one, but can't get too far away from their own 10-metre zone. A few big plays coming up. Who wants it for Wynnum? It's Humphreys coming in for some work. They get to the 20. Two plays left. Savan out of dummy half. Goes to Stanford. Stanford needs a big run. Gets a big run. Picks up 15, close to 20. Now it's last. Savan to Green. There's space here for Green again. Rewitty was up in the defensive line. The ball still bouncing around. So in the end, not too bad from Wynnum there. Yeah, not a bad set at all from Wynnum from where they were. But the defensive efforts from the Brighton Roosters there, it says a lot about their team and their culture. They aimed right up. Brebner, Graham, mistake-free defense. Put Wynnum on the back foot. But talk about a return serve here from Jaconia. 
Ratuva now. What a big man. <laughs> Runs into Savant Eddie. Fighting for a quick play of the ball. Now it goes to Nelson. He goes a short play to his centre man out there and many. And many's to the halfway line for Brighton. So just turning the screws a little bit here, Brighton, with field position. Nelson now caught, sort of flat footed, goes to back to the inside and picks up a few metres. It's last play now for Brighton. They're inside the opposition half, though. It goes back to Ailing. Ailing goes to Tapia. And Tapia puts end over end one here for Jaconia. The pressure's going to be on Jaconia. Ball's come loose. Is O'Keefe offside? The referee says knock on from Brighton there, Taylor. Yeah, look, I, I believe O'Keefe was a offside, but uh, is he should knock on Brighton or knock on Wynnum? I think it should be Brighton's ball. We'll just have a look here. That's, that's knock on yeah, that's come off, off Wynnum. And O'Keefe yeah, he has was actually, off, so it is a And O'Keefe ball. was offside. So, you know, in my opinion, that's a penalty. Yeah. Well, yeah. He was still got standing, the ball. standing in front of him. They get the ball either way. But, yeah, that's why I called it live play. I thought O'Keefe was definitely in front of him there. But and I understand if I was O'Keefe, I would have done the exact same thing in that yeah. situation. Just kill, just the, kill play the play where yeah. it is. Um, but that's a, that's a penalty in my opinion. Anyway, we'll move on. Nelson we'll ha now we'll have to. out to Latui. It's a big opportunity here for Brighton Taylor. They need to try and get some points, don't they? It's many. It's a good run from him. He's got them 10 metres out We're from the trial already. Been, it's only been 20 minutes. They're not desperate for points just yeah. yet, mate. Brebner. Taipia now. Inside runner is Harrison Mikendo. Nice footwork, Mikendo. And look at him go, Harrison! Yeah. That's an exceptional one -up, uh, try there from Harrison Mikendo. Yeah, beautiful work from the Roosters. And you can tell all through that set that they were setting up for a play to come back on the inside. They stretched out the defence from Wynnum. They went side to side. And then with a big, expansive play, using the middle forwards, lots of wide passes. Nuka Boy on the outside line. Then Mikendo rushes back through. Catches P Potamani just sitting on his haunches, still on the line, not moving up with the rest of the team. The, that's where the try scored. The original line is so good, isn't it, Taylor? Because it catches everyone flat-footed because they're all trailing towards the left-hand side and they've all got to stop and try and turn their shoulders to get to Harrison and he's the one with the full head of steam. Yeah, well, if you watch the, the whole set of six from start to finish, I understand it, it's very hard to do on a, instantly on a replay. Uh, but if you're sitting at home, you might want to rewind it and have a good look. They spread the win of defence from right to left in a long play and then they just tied out the middle with one short hit up and then they went. So it was really good work and you can just see that they're all they're all tied from moving across fields. Yeah. ATG is one of them. Um, who, who else is in? I think that's Mitch McMillan as well. He's on his haunches. So yeah, good work, good strategic work there from the Roosters to get their first point of the afternoon and knocked over with ease by Brock Nelson. Well, I said it was probably relatively... Not that he did anything wrong, Harrison, but a slow start for his standards. But ever since I've said that, he's done a lot of a lot of work here, and he's been rewarded now for great solo try. Yeah, well, we're 20 minutes into the match. I think Wyndham sort of caught Bright napping mm -hmm. twice on this right-hand edge defensively. Uh, they just didn't aim up physically enough, and, and they didn't stop stop it at the, the original play, um, allowing for those second-phase opportunities. And that's where Wyndham scored through their support players. Um, but once they get down this end, that was that was clinical football in that last set. Yeah, this um, this last sort of 15 minutes, they've been really good, haven't they? Like I said, they started to get a bit of possession, and they look like a pretty quality quality footy side, Taylor. Well, they are a quality footy side, mate. They just need to they just need to put it together. And yep. I spoke to Andrew Winyard before the game, their coach, and and that's what he wanted. He wanted them to really aim up this afternoon and show their true potential as a football side. Here's Graham now. He's always good, Samson, isn't he, Taylor? Yeah, just missed consistency, yeah. Samson Graham. Other than that early penalty, he's been great. Yeah. Defensively, he's been outstanding this afternoon. Crust plays it back to Baker. Now to Nelson, to Ailing. They're set to this right-hand side. It's Nakabuwa. A bit of footwork before the line. Run straight at O'Keefe, but picks up some great post-contact metres there. Almost gets him to the halfway line. Got a play down in backfield as Mikendo takes another charge and he picks up some nice meters as well. It's a winning player that's down. I think it's McMillan. So if they're smart, the Roosters, they'll wing it to the left hand side here where he normally is. They're going to go that way. The train is still on the field. He might get in the way if no one catches this pill, but it's well fielded by Humphreys. But Junior Rotuva, he's there as soon as he took the ball and dragged him back 10 meters out from the trial line. Yeah, good work there by Junior Rotuva. Picked up an extra 10 meters defensively, which was. Much needed for the Roosters. Don't they look like a different football oh, side now? Absolutely. Look at them in defence here. 
They're just keeping them pinned down inside their half at the moment. Stanford's come in for some work. Baker and Brebner have got him wrapped up. Some big minutes here for some of these middle forwards to start this match as well, Taylor. We see one interchange player now on the park. I think that's Blake Pyle. Yeah, Pyle get a, a good first run there for the juniors. Green is angry with himself as how he kicked that one. It's fielded by the winger for Brighton Roosters in Rowetti. Yeah, it wasn't the best kick there for Chris Green, but he had the right idea just trying to push it into this edge in order to um, catch Rawiti offside. He's almost got him a couple of times, to be honest. Here goes Many. Now he's found some space. Chucks it back into Rituva. Rituva, oh, well tackled by Spencer, and he's gone out as well. Well done, Dane Spencer. That's a big play. Yeah, massive play from Dane Spencer. Sprints across field, grabs one of those big, long, dangly legs of Rituva and drags him out. Oh, it was an absolute <laughs> sensational tackle. Dragged him all that way. <laughs> and a little bit, of, little bit of a serve straight after as well by Mr. Spencer. I don't mind that. Fired up, bit of aggression. Yeah, so we have seen a few changes now as well, Taylor, just as I spoke about the, the middlemen starting to get a break. We'll see Ambrose Fenn come into the action as well for the Brighton Roosters. As we already said as well, Blake Pyle's out there for Wynnum. We might see a few more as well. Here is that man, Pyle. This Brighton Roosters... Something's clicked there, Taylor. Look at this defence that they're showing now in this past sort of 15-minute period. Yeah, well, they need to start tightening up this ruck because uh, it can all be undone with one little uh, little flick of the hand movement. But they're working hard for each other, that's for sure. Nakabu, oh, was that an error out of dummy half from Coghill? No, the referee says. I'll tell you what, that looked close. Play on now to the right-hand side. Savanta Hedy at dummy half. He goes to Spencer. Sells Ooh. a dummy, runs into Nakabuai and Samson Graham there. They're finding it much harder now, the juniors, to get out of their end. Green puts it high. And here's what we were talking about pre-game. Good luck, Ailing. He drops it to the side. Referee says backwards. Yeah, great work there by Chris Green. It's the first one. We had to wait 25 minutes for it, but mm. we, we got that long kick in the end, the, Bur the Burton bomb, I think you, <laughs> you alluded to it. <laughs> I don't keep up with the kids. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Mate, Mitch, I'm Mitch, you. Yeah. <laughs> Mitch Ailing drops it backwards. He does a, does a really good really good job there in the end. It's such hard kicks yeah. to grasp, and he done well. Brody Baker still going. Yeah, still going, mate. And that's a good charge as well from Baker. They've definitely got the ascendancy at the moment, the Roosters. Getting all the field position here. They're almost to the halfway line. Still a few up their sleeve. They're going to go an early kick, though, through Nelson. He's found some space, too. Was he inside the 40 there? Spencer's got to get there quickly. Maybe he was. So Spencer now comes across field. The kick is there, and Nelson and does a good job in defence as well to slow him down. This is good footy from the Roosters. Yeah, it's really bite on your mouth guard type rugby league here from the men from Bright. I'd like to see them continue it because it's turned this into a real barn burner of a clash. Humphreys now with ball in hand. He takes the hit up for Wynnum, but again, the Roosters' defence really starting to aim up here. Now they go to Stanford, but he's hard to stop. They needed that run from Stanford. Almost gets him to the 40. Whitaker's at dummy half. He hands it off to O'Keefe, who comes all the way in for some work. Uh, there's a few tired bodies out there at the moment. Now the kick again straight down the throw to Ailing, but he dropped it backwards, which just pivots his sort of movements for that moment. Now he comes into the line and goes straight at Whitaker. Good return as well. A couple of extra metres. I actually don't mind the way he's played. A couple of times he hasn't got to the ball on the full there, Mitch. And obviously, icing on the cake, that's what you want. But he's very elusive ball runner. Finds himself in little creeks and cracks he didn't know existed. Many with that run. So it is interesting now. Cockhills, as we see, an offload here. And it's dropped by Brighton. They didn't need that. Picked up by Pyle. Just have Wynnum have the ball. Interesting to see where Coghill jumps in here with Green and Whitaker still out on the park. So too Savanta Hedis. So there's Kyle just taking a hit up himself. Maybe he's just in the forwards. I think he's playing 13. Mm. Malatoa now. Gets away from Nakabuwai and trying to get away from Tapia. Tapia, sorry, and eventually he slows him down. Savanta Hedis. Now to that man Coghill. He goes to Whitaker. Whitaker now just runs it himself. As I think it's one of the debutants get set for a run out here in Leighton for now. Finu, I think now. Run with Finu. Goes to Green. Puts it on the boot. The ball's bouncing backwards. Oh, here nah. comes Spencer. Oh, Spencer's got a double, but it's not great from the Roosters' defence there. Just trying to bat it dead. They didn't get the 
get the get the strength on it they would have needed Taylor Brown. Yeah, didn't quite get behind it, did he? Jalen Rowetti will have a look just at the lead up here. Nothing really doing for Wynnum. They decide to throw one on the boot, push through. Ball comes out the back here from Coggill to Green. Puts it on the toe. Rowetti, yeah, left hand bat, tried to get it dead. Wasn't quite hard enough, so disappointing there for Brighton. They've had three sort of plays that haven't been their best football that have led to try straight away. They're just capitalising on every opportunity, the juniors at this stage. Great try to Dane Spencer there. So yeah, just confirming that Debuton is out there now and Leighton for now. If we are pronouncing that incorrectly and if you're his family member watching on in the live stream, just let us know and we'll try and correct it for you. We hope you do enjoy the broadcast. Wherever you are watching from, we thank our platinum sponsor, Chaos. All your four-wheel driving accessories. Get in there and have a shop around as Jaconia gets ready to line this one up. So 16 points to six with a kick to come. Yeah, Brenda Jaconia got the kicking duties again, so Chris Green truly has sacked himself. <laughs> yeah, interesting one it is, because it was a nice kick that he actually struck early on to convert that one from out wide, but... on now Brandon but considering all that defense they had to do Taylor Brighton um wouldn't have come up oh sorry Wyndham had to do all that defense when Brighton were attacking their line I, I felt like they were getting the ascendancy on the game and just an error in the end costly for Brighton to mm. give Wyndham that field position well they're a football side that really needs to play that mistake free mm. free rugby league um Brighton they don't have too many out and out sort of superstars in their side um, not too many players that, that light, light the competition up that can cause those breaks one-on-one. -on -one. They need to wear teams down. And when they were doing that, when they were wearing them down and just continuous, just un, just relentless attack, just relentless uh, defence and the way that they were defending, uh, you know, with that sort of, with that edge of, of heat in it, um, that's what works well for them. And they need to get back to that and do that well. But unfortunately, a couple of errors in defence and uh, they leak points immediately, so it's a it's a bit disheartening for the for the Roosters who are trying very hard. The effort's 100% there, um, but they still find themselves down on the school board. 18 points to six here. Ball with Blake Pyle now, ticking towards the final 10 minutes of this first half. Oh, Pyle's got an error in the play of the ball. He sort of gave himself up to the referee as well. And this is the opportunity Brighton wanted. Yeah, it's the opportunity that Brighton needed. Yeah, I thought there might have been a little hand on the ball there as he pushes himself out. But the ball comes loose. Brighton will get another opportunity. Now, they have a full set here, and interestingly enough, as we said in that, that last set of six, they played very smart football as a whole to get the try. So I'm interested to see what they've been working on over there at Brighton. To bring out here. Tapia to Nelson now off the back of the scrum. He's out. Plays in motion and opts to go to Many, who's really started to come into his own in the back end of this half. Many. Bacon now finally getting his first break, and he is replaced by the debutant and Leighton for now. And Ambrose Fenn. A little footwork trying to get away from the markers. 20 out from the try line now are the Roosters. It's crust. To Pia, to the line, goes to Ailing. Now to Mikendo. Mikendo is so tough to handle. And he almost got went all the way there. Ailing's at dummy half. They're a metre short from the try line. To Pia off a bouncing ball. Puts a little stabbing kick through. Ambrose Fenn is coming through. The ball might have beat everyone though. Did that go out of Wynnum? No, it was grounded from Wynnum. So they'll get a repeat here, Brighton. A nice work from To Pia. Attacks the line. Couldn't see anything doing. The boys were pushing hard through the middle. Ambrose fan Leighton Fien out. And they cause an extra set of six. And pressure building, as I mentioned before, this is the type of football that Brighton need to play. Chris Green off the dropout there. Oh, look at this one. It's going to go on the bounce about 70 metres. So ailey has got some work in front of him. He hands it off to the debutant. His first hit up in the BRL Premier Competition. Might have been a... Well, accidental. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> An accidental crusher, maybe? I'm not sure, but he, he ended up on his shoulders. He's all right, and he, he wants the ball again. He wants to go again. 
They go to the left-hand side now through Nelson. Oh, he goes to Ailing, an outside-inside play. That was a desperate tackle there by Pyle. Now it's Crust. They want it high. They won't get it. The Brighton Roosters are rolling here. They want some points before the break. Tapia now puts it on the boot. Looking for Rowetti. Mikendo's there as well. And it's just well taken by Jaconia. No one wants to put a hand on him, though. Oh. Jaconia picks it up and goes. And Mikendo's probably lucky he didn't get away from him. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I have my heart my mouth for him. O'Keefe now. Nakabuwai in the tackle. Spencer. Alda. Debutants there in defence. And for now... Now they go with Whitaker. Find Stanford. Stanford trying to get away from Many, but Many says, no, mate, you are not going anywhere. And he gets some support and they drag him back. <laughs> Good defense by the Roosters. Latui there as well. Humphreys now into the line. Again, a pretty solid defensive set here from Brighton. They've got a kick now, Winham. Inside their own 30. Goes right back to Green. Green puts it on the boot. It's not his best, but it will bounce around. Fielded by Ailey. Now it's Mitch Ailing into the line and gets him over the halfway line on tackle one, Taylor. Yeah, beautiful work there from Brighton defensively. And then Mitch back there to field that one. So just looking at the back play here, I think Dane Spencer may have come off with an injury or he's sit certainly sitting out on the wing at the moment. Jaconi is, at full Jaconi is at fullback. So some sort of sternum issue. Might just be trying to run it out. So play on now with the Roosters. Still a few up their sleeve here. Goes to Nakabu Wai. Tries to get away from Green and Alda. Picks up some metres, though, to get him 20 out from the try line. Now the Roosters. It's crust at dummy half. He goes to Tapea. He goes to the debutant in for now. He just takes a settler. He wins his side of penalty as well. Yeah, great work from Leighton Finau. He's had a turn an up and down first first couple of minutes. That tough hit up from the start. But, yeah, I thought there was a little bit of a, a lift in the tackle and... So he gets away with that one. Nice work late. May get a try here. Crust. Short play to Fenn. He now is there as well. What do they do here, Roosh? This is Crust from dummy half. He has a little stab himself. Spins, turns. Held up. You see there, Crust on the chaos replay. Just fighting for everything, but... Enough Wyndham players there. Now they go, it's Graham. To Pia. Alda missed him. He put on the boot straight away. Took a deflection. Juniors get there first and grounded in goal. So they've got another repeat here, Brighton. Yeah, a lot of defensive work at the moment for Wyndham. They're just stacking it up and stacking it up here. Brighton, they've got four and a half minutes. Oh, sorry, five minutes to the halftime break. I don't think the Dan is going to hold that long if they keep the pressure on. Tapia not sh not shy of a, an early kick as well, keeping the Wynnum defensive side guessing. It's fielded by that man Tapia now, hands it off to Leighton again, and here goes Leighton into the line. <laughs> oh, and they came for him, but credit to him, that was a nice solid run. Plays it back to Crust. Crust now to Fenn. This is what Fenn's so good at. He really gets them on the up, doesn't he, Ambrose, when he, when he comes onto the field. I always feel like he picks up the pace of play. Nelson. Many now, many, one-on-one, -on -one, chucks it. No, he doesn't chuck it back on his inside. He keeps going. He almost got there in the end, Many. He'll play it back. Ailing to Leighton Finau, and he goes off his right and comes back to the inside. <laughs> nope. Cross that dummy half. They've got plays in motion. They come to their right-hand side. To Pia, now to Nakabuwai. Out has just picked him up and put him in the turf. <laughs> Play it back again. It's last play now. Tapia, little short kick looking for Rowetti. The ball's bouncing around. It's picked up by Tapia off his own kick, and he scores in the corner. Yeah, Winnem are appealing there. They're asking. There's a lot of hands. In. Are you 100% sure, referee? But he points to the spot, awards the try. We'll have a look. Tapia gets the ball in hand. This is a play before. Absolutely lifted there is Nakabuwai by Outer, who's had a sensational game in the second row. And Tapia gets it over the top. We'll have a look here. Yeah, I thought it might have come off Jaconia. Goes forward into the hands of Tapia, so he'll score in the corner. Yeah, Wyndham obviously appealing. Harrison got a touch there, but I think I think um, Jaconia 
had hands to it first. So, Yeah, well, certainly the referee and touch judge are in the best position yeah. out of anyone in that situation. And looking back on the replay, it does seem yeah. like it was touched first by Jaconia. So good call there by the referee. And following up his own play there, Ty Tapia gets a mean pie. The kick coming up here for Brock Nelson as wide as you can possibly be. It's meat pie weather too, isn't it? Meat pie weather. He'll go through his process, but we've got a pretty good ball game here, Taylor Brown. I'll tell you what. Yeah, it, well, it, the ladder says that th these two teams are close, and this game is showing it as well. The thing, the thing that's been in this match is that it's been bright and Roosters. Um, they, they started behind the eight ball, obviously, mm. and, and then they build up, build up, build up, score a good try, win them, one against the runner play, build up, build up, build up, Brighton again. Um, so if, if Brighton could just nail these against the runner play tries, it, it's a nice strike from Nelson. Gonna win two, the ball and he's got it. Two from two off the boot of Brock Nelson. But yeah, it's, it's, it's just been that sort of sort of match. It, it, you feel like if Brighton didn't start that slow and, and concede two early tries, then we could have a complete different scoreline here. However, they've got into their groove and now they've got themselves back into the contest. Yeah, back into the contest. There's a minute and a half to go. Winham are a bit slow. They've done a lot of defensive work in this half. I'd like to see Brighton try and explode and try a thing or two. They have the men to do it. Yeah. I think Mitch Ayling's one of them. Uh, I, th I think to pay up on this side, Mac and Doe. So yep. I'd like to see combined together in the middle of the park to, to try and get one away. You saw before Nelson almost got that inside ball to Ailing. They need to try something like that this set. I wouldn't even be too upset with a chip kick, to be honest. Well, that was very deep from Green. Rutt Hoover just picked it up, though, with ease. And it's a nice, eventually a nice return from him as well off the kickoff. So what can Brighton do? You'd think it would probably be their last set with ball in hand before the halftime break. Taylor wants to see something. Let's get it to the speed many reckons. It's crust, and he hands it off to Fenn. I think that is, and Fenn picks up some nice meters, almost gets him to the halfway line. Played back to crust. Now crust, oh, he almost went himself, and he found some space out of dummy half. Two plays to go here. Now out of dummy half goes Rowetti. It's the last play. They're 40 out from the try line. What do they do? They go back to the try oh. scorer, and he couldn't handle it. Was that off his boot? No, it wasn't. The referee says it's a knock on. Yeah, interesting there. He, he just didn't get, quite get his hand on it. I would love to have seen what he was going to do when he did because he wound right yes. up. <laughs> but the ball's dropped. 20 seconds to go. Scrum to be packed. I don't even think Wynnum want this. Oh, well, Green's calling for it. He's pushing everyone in. Wants he to wants, a, he wants to play the ball yeah. with 10 seconds to go. He well, wants to have go. a crack at something. Well, he's going for it. He is a kick. He's caught... Rewitty in field. Here goes Jaconia down the touchline. Oh, the touch. He's got his flag up. This would have been a remarkable try. But the touch. He has got his flag up, Taylor. And how about that into the half, mate? Yeah, great call from the touchy there because he, he did. He had, his, he had his feet in the line the whole time. So beautiful work for the touch judge. That would have been something great. As I mentioned, that's what I was looking for the Brighton Roosters. But Chris Green manages to do it mm. for Wynnum. Doesn't quite pull it off, but he gets close. So half time here on... BRL TV, it's Cameron Acre and Taylor Brown with you. We have really got a solid match in front of us, so make sure you stay tuned for the second half. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with that second half shortly. Thank you very much.
Alrighty, welcome back to Kitchener Park here. It's round 15 on BRL TV. It's Cameron Anker and Taylor Brown with you. That halftime scoreline reads the winner, Manly Juniors 18, the Brighton Roosters 12, Taylor Brown. It's anyone's game so far. What do you think is being said in those sheds? What do these teams need to do to try and get the get the big fat W and come away off that win this afternoon or this evening now? Yeah, it's a little bit uncharacteristically like I'm looking over at Andrew Winyard and his in his little makeshift dressing shed down here at the end of the ground and he's very adamant mm. you know you can see him moving you see him talking and, and, and he looks uh, sort of upset I, I guess with some of the things that they've done um, I believe they've probably played some more classic rugby league you know to the you know to the to the rugby league uh, fan that just you know old school loves that grinding sort of rugby league in Melbourne Storm of, of mm. you know five six years ago that's how, how Brighton have played but that only works if you're doing that 100% of the time and they've let those few little tries go through um, it's only a couple of mistakes, yeah. but Wyndham have capitalised on it. Um, so obviously it's not up to, to win his standards, and he, he's drilling that into his players. So it'll be interesting to see how they react to that chat at halftime and how they come out for the next 40 minutes. And over on the Wyndham side, Taylor, obviously they've got a six-point lead here. They started the match so well, they got it. They raced out the 12 points to zero, but then when the game came into that sort of grind in the middle, you felt like Brighton Roosters got the ascendancy then, didn't they? Yeah, they did, and, and I feel like uh, Brighton were, were just playing, you know, strong, tough football. I think Wyndham are a bit shocked, and I don't think they really would be that impressed with how they played. A um, few of their, their fifth tackle options haven't been that great from Chris Green uh, and a few others. I, I just think they've got a lot of better football in them. Um, I haven't really seen much attacking football. You know, they've they've had a couple of tries off really sort of lucky lucky sort of errors and they push through the middle. So, yeah, I don't think they'd be very happy with the way they're playing either. So they'll need, they'll need to push forward. Um, of course, both these sides will play against each other again next weekend with yeah. the, the washed out round coming back. So, yeah. um, you know, if they, they win one, they win the other, yeah. you know, push them a long way towards the semi-finals, and they'll need they'll need to lift that's for sure because win them at the moment they're they're comfortably ahead on the ladder. Uh, I think it's five points in it, but two wins that's six to six to uh, the Brighton Roosters, and yeah, all of a so sudden it's, 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 it's these two matches are big because of the washed out round. They they all get a good look at each other they in get the a very whole good competition. Look. And like you said, it's these two matches are pivotal, especially because this could be a six-point swing for Brighton if they manage to get a win and then go on off it again next week. Yeah, it could be a six-point swing. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it'll be it's, it's a very tough game, and it'll be interesting to see how they push through because this 40 minutes really is the end of the season for Brighton if they can't win. Um, and, and for Wyndham, it's not it's not that dire straits, but you know they love to go two for two against the Roosters and really dash them. Yeah dash their hopes for finals. Well, they are home here, the Winner Manly Juniors, and they've got their rowdy crowd starting to get a little bit rowdy behind us here, Taylor, the, the, I love the that. patrons on, on the deck here at Kitchener Park. I love that. Let's see I'd, love how to, I'd love to be up there with a the schooner myself, to be <laughs> honest. It looks like a real good time. <laughs> get a few of them on the mic? Yeah, why not? <laughs> so, just about set to go in the second half here. It's ailing to get us back underway, and the Kicks it down towards Whitaker, and Whitaker he'll find Pyle. He'll take the first hit up of the second half. He got away from Graham, but not as far as Mikendo. And Graham came again over the top to finish the tackle. So 40 minutes on the clock here, a six-point different ball game with the winner Manly Juniors leading the Brighton Roosters. Who will come away with the win here? Malatoa plays it back to the 14 there out there now for Winham, and that's Unicomb. Plays it back to Coghill. Coghill takes one himself. So a couple of dummy half runs to start the second half for Wynnum. Unicomb looks to be slotting in to the dummy half roll with Tahedi off. Green inside the 40, but that was touch. Rooster's got to be quick to get there. Fenn does get there. And Fenn beats a couple as well, but eventually wrapped up. But nice, nice there from Brighton to be aware that they need to get to the ball there, Taylor. Yeah, well, I think... I don't think Ambrose Fenn was too happy with it. He was just done a set of defence and all of a sudden he had to jump and get on top of that ball. But they've done well and now they're already in Wyndham territory on tackle two. Yeah, that's what it does do for the Roosters. Gives them an early chance here in this second half. Cross to Ailing, Ailing out to Tapia. Tapia almost split them. Starting to get his running game on. Tied Tapia. They go to the right-hand side again. Nakabuwai with ball in hand. He's well wrapped up. Crust to Pia. Nelson kick across field looking for Rotuva, but 
Humphreys gets there, and Humphreys gets away from a few. He has got speed. Oh, he lost it. Great cover from Ratuva. Now picked up by Nelson. Nelson might get taken to... No, he doesn't. Stays in field. But that well, was great cover by Ratuva there, Taylor. It was a I really good cover. I thought was away for all money. I think Ratuva sort of knew within himself that he didn't put himself in the best position to catch that ball. He probably could have done a little bit more. So he did everything he could in his power to get the ball back, and, and he did. So a strange uh, swing of events, but... Mm. The juniors are defending again. Seems like all they've done is defence this game. Yeah. For now, with ball in hand, he's trying to get an offload, but unfortunate for the debutant, it's come loose, come out of his grasp. Yeah, they don't come that easy in this competition. And for now, will be all the better for this run, but someone will have to pull him aside and say, <laughs> it's not that easy anymore. Mind you, look count. at the frame of him. I reckon he'd get a fair few of them away in the, in the yeah. BRL under-20s competition. Oh, you'd, yeah, you definitely think so. He's standing above most people in that scrum getting back down, isn't he? Yeah, he's a good foot taller than everyone. Yeah. He's massive. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wynnum, they get away if one there with that er error from Humphreys off the kick return. Now it works its way out to Stanford. Stanford runs into Nakabuwa and Brock Nelson. Plays it back to Unicomb. Unicomb to Pyle. Feels like Wynnum are just sort of struggling to get into their groove early in the second half here. Not much going on. Pyle wrapped up by Crust. Malatoa now. Great run. Trust him to get them back on the front foot, that's for sure for Wynnum. Now it goes to Coghill. Coghill to the line, runs himself. Last tackle now for Wynnum. Coghill looking for a quick play. The ball referee tells him to get up. Goes to Whitaker now. On the boot of Braden Whitaker, Ratuva there, just easy as you like. Yeah. Took the and ball. And now he's away. Oh, the referee's going to call it back. I think he's got Mitch Ailing for shepherding. Let's have a look and at this. I think he did change his line. We'll have a look at the replay, but. <laughs> yeah, look, that is a penalty. That's a textbook penalty, so. He's running. Yeah. If he had stopped, it might have been okay, but he's running towards the mm. ball, right? Yeah. Oh, it's just hard these days. Yeah. You almost you almost can't do it. Yeah. You're better off just waiting to see what happens with the ball. And it's crazy because you're not sticking up for your teammates. And yeah. every bit of your instinct says oh, to get Oh, it's Brighton ball. Oh, geez. So they're saying that maybe Rotuva or <laughs> um, whoever it was there for Brighton got taken out. Is that what we're saying? Why would you not let Rotuva keep running down the sideline if it was a penalty? Yeah. I don't understand that. Because Rotuva was away. Oh. I'm not sure, Taylor. Oh. I'm really not sure about that one. Yeah. Please explain. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's Brighton's ball again, and now it's with Ailing. They go to the right-hand side to Pia inside to Sampson Graham. Wins the tackle, gets a quick play of the ball as well. There goes Kras. Coghill might have been offside there. We're playing on anyway. And they're starting to roll Brighton here. Yeah, they look good. They've had all the possession this half. Nelson. Fenn. Footwork at the line again from Ambrose. Last play now for Brighton. They can get an attacking kick away here. It's crust to Nelson. The Tui inside. It's gone to no one. Picked up by Winner Manley. Not a great intercept there. Oh, we've got a penalty. <laughs> Brighton again. <laughs> well, I saw that one. I saw everything that happened there. Tackled off the ball for the Winner Manley. We'll just have a look here. And he's going to, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Tackled off the ball there. Look, he might, he might not have got there anyway, but it's it, again, that's a penalty, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You can't tackle someone without the ball. It's yeah. a penalty at the start of the first <laughs> half. It's a penalty at the start of the second. So, yeah, Brighton Roosters, just, I'd love to have someone like Brad Talon on hand to tell me exactly how much ball they've had. Yeah. But it seems like a bit of a 90-10 split at the moment for this half. Samson Graham now charging towards the line. Samson, he gets low. Crust. Short play again. Meter short from the try line. They've got numbers to the right. Crust needs to get it there. It's a slow play. The ball. Crust goes himself out of dummy half. And he's held up again. Yeah, second time Crust done that in that sort of situation. You'd think he needs to try and switch it up a little bit. Push it to his outside man. Could be missing opportunities out wide that his halves are seeing. So they go left now through Nelson, looking for an inside runner. He ran himself. Needs a quick play the ball here because it's last play for the Roosters. There's a man down for Wynnum. Goes to Tapea now. Another little kick through. They've got to get there quickly, and they do. But that's another repeat set for the Roosters, Taylor. Yeah, Chris Green just gets there first, taps it out. 
repeat set for Wynnum, but uh, might be exactly what the Roosters need to keep pushing forward. They seem to be in sixes and sevens here. Wynnum, they're trying to slow down this kick as much as possible. It'll be the longest walk of Chris Green's life here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it certainly is, Taylor. Well, Brebner's back on for the Roosters. Samson Graham still out there. It's going to be an 80-minute stint for him, I think. It's definitely been a dominant start to this second half for the Roosters, that's for sure. They would love some points here. He goes to Ambrose Fenn. Into the line. They'll start this set 30 out from the try line now. Crust to Brebner. Brebner into the line. Good job on him there. Unicomb and Alda. Crust goes out of dummy half. or dummy <laughs> Everyone fell for it except for one player for Winnemoo who made a clutch tackle. Now it's Graham out of dummy half. He hands it off to Brebner. Now to Tapea. Tapea, nice ball out to Mikendo. Mikendo will go himself and score his second. Nice play from Brighton. Two-point ball game now. Yeah, way to possession here. Really hurting the Winnemoo Juniors Football Club. Brighton just keep pushing through the middle. They had players everywhere. This was a great run originally by Crust. Gets out, throws a massive dummy. Samson Graham, I don't know who he thinks he is, but he goes for a run himself, <laughs> but gets the offload. Smart work by Brebner just to recognise as someone in a better position. Gets it to his outside man in Tapea. Long ball to McIndo. One-on-one, -on -one. you're not going to stop him there. Just a little too much to handle for Ryan O'Keefe. Well, what a start to the second half here from the Roosters, Taylor Brown. I mean, they've been so dominant. They've had all the ball apart from, I think, maybe one set. Yeah, I think, I think one set of six, yeah. Now they've got some points to show for it. We've definitely got a ball game on our hands at the moment because it's fair to say since probably the 20-minute mark, it's been Brighton Roosters being the better side. Yeah, I think they have been the better side. Um, and since that 20-minute mark, you know, they're, they're winning the game 16-6. Mm. Uh, so if they can continue to turn up like they are now, I've got no doubt that they're going to carry on to, to win this match. Um, the question also remains to be seen, is this amount of defence for yeah. Wynnum just going to stack up and yeah. stack up and stack up and really hurt them at the back end of this game? I'm not quite sure what interchange they're up to now, but surely it's chewing through the gas tanks mm. of their players. So strike here from Nelson. He's got a good strike on him, but that one's waved away. So score remains 18 points to 16. Double to Mackendo. Double to Mackendo. Double to Dane Spencer. Double quarter pound on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Doubles left, right, centre. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Is it is it the sponsorship on the side of the ground here that got you? Maybe. I think it is. <laughs> That's how it I works. Think, I was That's undecided. I knew it was going to be something naughty. And then I <laughs> saw Maccas everywhere down here at Kitchener Park. And big Ron strikes again. Kick off here from Green to get us back underway. They need a good defensive set here. Winham, they haven't had much ball. Oh, Ambrose Fenn, the ball's gone across his face. Brebner oh, can't pick it up. No. Winham are in. Off the kickoff. You're kidding me. Oh, wow. What a play. I don't Is think there's any Pyle? words for that of what's happened. Yeah, the, the replay, they've probably only gone back 10 seconds, but it's the kickoff that we're seeing. Oh, jeez. Just Ambrose fan, not quite getting there. Retuva, bit of a terrible ball in the end. It and is. Then it's Blake Pyle. Well, how do you describe that, Taylor? I don't know how I do describe that. But Retuva throws a ball across the face. A fan hits the ground and... <sighs> well, just as the bright... Mm. Brighton was just all over them. They just needed to keep sticking to the program. Foot on the throat. And they, and they always say complete the set after points, but <laughs> I think that's the polar opposite of completing a set. That's the worst scenario. Mate, that's a feel for a retriever there. I mean, the ball's gone across the face of Fenn, and then the big man Bremner's asked to pick it up off his toes, which is <laughs> always going to be tough. And Pyle oh. picks it up and scores himself a media. And I tell you what, Wynnum needed that. They needed something to change this game, and... Something random like that can happen, I suppose, on the rugby league I'll tell you field. what, Connor Brebner, after that shot a look at Junior Retuva and Ambrose Fenn, and he's doing a lot better than I would have been in that situation because I would have absolutely sprayed the ears off him. Oh, but anyway, it is what it is. Hopefully that's a bit of a fire in the belly. Yeah. But might be exactly what Wynnum needed. 
now up by eight points. Yeah, it went from a two-point ball game, and you think Brighton Roosters are all over this. In the space of not even one completed play, it goes back to a Wynnum Juniors eight-point lead. Crazy turn of events. So Ailing. Back underway in the night sky here at Kitchener Park. Whitaker fields it, hands it off to that man, the try scorer. Blake Pyle runs into crust. He probably still can't believe he scored a try. Yeah. Thompson, Caleb Thompson getting ready for the Whitaker Manly Juniors. Trying to get his first taste of some footy here. Coggill hands it off to Alder. Outer plays it back to Unicomb. Now to Coggill, face ball. They're on the outside with O'Keefe. Oh, they're going to push and him to the touch. touch. Brighton are happy about that, so no completed set for Wynnum after points either. Yeah, beautiful work there by Harrison McIndoe. And hasn't he come into his own yeah, in this match? He's played he some outstanding kept up, football. Didn't he? Kept him up, brute strength, and just pushed all the way through. So great work there by Harrison McIndoe, single handedly. Turning the fade around for the Roosters on several occasions. Jeez, he's a star. Graham now. Again, an opportunity here for Brighton to try and get us back to a two-point ball game. Latui. Fighting every inch on the ground there. Whitaker over the top. Now we go to the right-hand side through Nelson. Nelson floating across field, finds Sampson Graham. Sampson Graham straightens the attack up. They're set to the right here, the Brighton Roosters. A lot of pointing going on. Now they go that way, and it's just a short play to Brebner. And Brebner just keeps it going forward. It takes about four plays to get him to the ground. Thompson, one of them, the fresh man on the park for Wynnum. Now they go to the right-hand side. It's to pay now, bit of footwork at the line again. He's already scored one. He's fighting to try and roll over the line. It's last play now. Watch Crust, short play. Graham oh, scores! Wow. Great right line. Rooster try. Great line. Great ball. And they get one straight back over the top of the juniors. We'll just see the hit up here to pay up. Dummies and goes at the line. I thought he might have got through himself. The way he gets off the right foot. Spencer does well. Just gets stopped as he rolls. And then crushed. Look at Sampson Graham. In line, straight on the outside. You've got Coghill not used to defending in the middle. A little bamboozled by the footwork of Samson Graham and Alex Crust. Hard to stop. Uses the pads well. Two-point ball game again, Taylor. Well, he's got to kick it first. And, mate, crazy things have happened in this game. <laughs> so the other debutant makes his way out onto the field for Brighton Roosters. Sione Kavalu. And I've just got a correct pronunciation on what I've been saying. Mikendo is now Mackendo, and I'll, I'll trust this lady because she's got the same last name so yeah. we appreciate that thanks trace we're back in we're back in harrison mackendoe oh, he's had a great afternoon hasn't he and into the evening a couple of tries it's been very good for this brighton rooster side especially this whole year but especially this past couple of weeks yeah so two point and now, now we'll be saying his name right so that helps yeah, as well definitely helps <laughs> so chris green now 24-22, so plenty of points so far. Who can come away with the win? I'll tell you what, I'll be telling him to catch this one on the full. Oh, no, oh, he's bouncing go. around. Here we go. Oh, and it's Rituva in there. Smart play by Rituva. <laughs> he goes, I'm not passing this one. <laughs> nice play the ball too, and now allows Cross to go. Thought the market might not have been square there in Whitaker. Referee allows it to play on. Here's the debutant in Sione Kavalu. Yeah, good first touch. Might have been lucky not to win inside a penalty there as well. Works its way out to Tapia, puts the kick on the boot now straight down the throat of Spencer though. Spencer seems to have evaded that sort of injury he had late in the first half and he comes along and gets it to the 30 metre line. Winner Manly, they haven't had much ball. The one time they touched it, they scored a try though. Humphreys now with ball in hand. Yeah, interesting to see what Winham do here. I think just a couple of, uh, oh no, there's a loss in the play of the ball. They are not helping themselves at the moment. No, they're not. Error after error after error here for the juniors. And the crowd is starting to get involved too, Taylor. Well, they're going to have to because the amount of gas they're burning by defending. 
If they're going to get home, it's going to be purely on the crowd. Kavalu, another nice touch, his second touch. He wants to keep going, the referee will tell him to go back. <laughs> <laughs> That's just enthusiasm, I like it. Brebner now. 20 out from the try line, the Roosters. Do they go the way of McIndoe again? They are. Inside play this time, though, to Samson Graham. He's already scored one. 10 out from the try line now are the Roosters. They like the right, but they come left through Brebner now. Kavalu now. Oh, oh, he can't handle it. And it's picked up by McMillan. Yeah, unfortunate there by Kavalu because he was looking good. Not a bad little offload there by Brebner either. Just misses his assignment with the hands, Kavalu. So score remains 24 points to 22. The juniors over the Brighton Roosters at the moment. Oh, yeah. Outer, big contact, Nakabuai in there. Tapea was there over the top. Plays it back. Unicomb now, finds some space around the ruck, and here he goes, Ethan. That's a nice run there. Coghill was coming, so too Spencer. He just couldn't find them. Coghill at dummy half now. Goes out to Green. Another tester here for Ailing. Ailing oh. can't handle it. So both times Green has gone to these kicks in the air. Ailing has struggled, and this time Ailing knocks it on. Yeah, it's the way that that, that went high, but it came down yeah, fairly it was, quickly, didn't it? It, wasn't, yeah. it didn't have a lot of hang time. The way it moved in the air, and it was very hard to read for Ailing. He didn't want to let it touch the ground. Made a play, and unfortunately, there'll be the ball back in the hands of the juniors. Jeez, it's been a seesawing second half, hasn't it? 20 minutes gone. I feel like we've seen everything. Well... I think it's fair to say 20 minutes gone, and this is the first time Wynnum will have a full set in the opposition half because mm. the only other time they touch a ball was off the try from yes. Blake Pyle off the kickoff. I don't think they've had a set in this half. No, they haven't. The second half. They haven't. They'll need to. They'll, they'll hope they can do something with this. I'd like to see them build a bit of pressure themselves. Mm. Just stab one into the in goals, repeat set. Nice run from Ethan Unicomb earlier in that set too to get him in some good position. Now it's with Spencer. Footwork from Spencer and just takes the settler off the scrum there. Now they work the centre channel. Malatoa. Played back to Unicone. Outer. Footwork again. Nakabuwa's up to the task, but Outer's still fighting. Eventually they put him to ground. Unicome at dummy half. Goes to Green. Green now an inside ball to Coghill. Coghill puts a bit of footwork on it, but he's well contained there. They slow it right down, the Roosters. They're sort of caught up on each other there. Unicome. Malatoa. Short ball to Thompson. Back to Malatoa. Malatoa now for the line. Can't get there. The juniors on the front foot here. Winner Manly on their home turf. They go to the right-hand side through Whitaker. Long ball out to Humphreys. Rituva can't get him. Humphreys comes back in, but they'll take him over the touch line, will they? Yes, they will. Yeah, just an attempt to get it over the top. I think Humphreys might be in a bit of trouble. They're calling for help, but yeah, Rituva misses the first time and comes back on the inside. And then between Nelson and Rituva, they drag him over the, uh, over the sideline. So beautiful work there. Savata Hiri comes on for the juniors trying to make an impact. So and Humphreys comes off as well. I think he's worried about his shoulder might be popped out. Be interesting to see what they do there. Maybe McMillan goes to centre and Stanford goes straight to the wing. Looks like Adam Tumavave Gerard's going to go on, but he won't be playing wing, that's for oh, sure. I hope so. <laughs> Someone give him the licence. <laughs> ATG on the sting. <laughs> So Roosters now with ball in hand. It's Rowetti taking a charge. Looking for an offload. He's got an arm free. He can throw it if he wants. He doesn't. Plays it back to Crust. Crust now to Nelson. Out to Tapia. Looking to spread it wide. He runs himself and he's wrapped up by Alda. Brandon Whitaker will trail back for the kick here. And luckily he got there because Nelson's kicking right at him. A couple of bounces and goes to Whitaker. He won't, be, he won't do too many kick returns in his time, Taylor, but he wins oh, this side of penalty. Shoulder charge there. Dane Spencer tries to tap and go. Referee brings it back. But, yeah, Whitaker would be absolutely filthy 
He's saying, where's my winger? He's off injured. Who's replaced him? Or hang on, now it's me. <laughs> he's come back and then he's been given a right shoulder. Well, oh. maybe they pop Coghill um, into the halves and maybe they're going to play Whitaker on the wing. It looks as though that's what's going to happen. I don't think so. Coghill's still playing in the middle here. Whitaker's yeah. defending. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. He's they've got to, going they've got now, to do Whitaker. something. Uh, maybe Stanford will stay out here on the wing because Whitaker is trailing infield now. Yeah, they put McMillan back into the centres. Yeah. So Savan now out of dummy half. They go to the left hand side through Green. Green early ball to Outer. He's been their option Outer, hasn't he? With limited opportunities, he's been good when he has had ball in hand. Yeah, I thought the Rakeen Outer experiment to the second row has been a massive success. To so the far. juniors. Yep. He's troubled them every time he's touched the, and carried the ball. And they play on now. Still deep down that left-hand side. Goes to Kyle Coghill now. He goes to Tumabave Gerard. One way he goes, and that's forward. Centre of the park here at Kitchener. Savan out of dummy half. Just pins the ears back. Goes himself. Pops an offload. And that'll be Kyle Coghill. Try time. Oh, the big rugby union dive for Kyle Coghill and they're happy there the Wynnum Juniors they've had barely any ball in this second half but they make it count when they do get it Coghill with that offload to ATG strong hit up he's so hard to contain quick play the ball to here he jumps and goes Coghill's pushing Green's pushing gets the offload away and no one's going to stop Kyle Coghill second phase play that close to the try line Really great play from Savan there. Yeah, he just recognised that the defence is in a little bit of trouble. I'm just going to jump. Green and Coghill just get straight on their bikes and go with him. They didn't know what was going to happen. They just knew there would be some form of opportunity. The big thing for this Wynnum side as well, as Jaconia lines this one up from right in front, they've got this eight-point buffer back again. So that one miss from Nelson as much. He striked him well this afternoon, but he did miss that one. Um, to the left-hand side of the post that could come back to haunt them. You know, just, uh, they were using Kyle Coghill a little differently for my liking the last couple of sets. I've noticed him, he is playing the lock position, but they're using him as a battering room as opposed to just an extra set of hands in the yeah. middle. Um, there was at one stage, he, he took a hit up, um, and then the next play, Malatoa's running a block play, and I'm thinking, just get Malatoa to take the original yeah. hit up, and then... Coghill will, will jump into the block play. That, yeah. That's his bread and butter. He's a 5'8 yeah. by, by nature. But, um, yeah, that's, that's the benefit of having him that extra half in the middle. I did find it interesting seeing him on the interchange bench this afternoon, Kyle Coghill. I think he's especially – well, we all, we all know how good he was last year in this competition, right? He was one of the best players in the comp. He ended yep. up getting a debut for the Brisbane Tigers in, in Cup. But it's just interesting to see his progression now with Wynnum. Um, I think – he is contracted with the cup side, isn't he? I believe he is, yes. Yeah, but hasn't managed to get a game yet, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think he has had one game he this year. He has had a game? Okay. Yes. I wonder what's coming down from that, the orders from Brido there at Wynnum and where he wants Kyle to play and what sort of role. Would not be surprised if they, if they want to see him in that roaming 13 lock yep. position. To Mavave Gerard now. Nakabuai in defence. So too crust. Vanta Hedia, dummy half. He goes to Whitaker. He just takes one himself. Almost to the 40 now. Now at the back to Green. Inside the 40. Ball sort of holds up a little bit here at Kitchener. It's bouncing around. It's anyone's ball now. Back to Green. Little tip on. Savan out the back to Outer now. There's space in front of him. Now it's Jaconia. Step, jink. Back on the inside for Brandon. Here goes Brandon. Kyle Cole kills there. He keeps stepping. He's going himself. Back to the outside. Now it's the last play for Wynnum. Plays it back slowly to Savan. They work a short left-hand side, a oh. little tip on, little kick through. Can they get there? The ball's bouncing around. It's play on now. The Brighton Roosters hold him up and... Eventually, they make the tackle. It's a set restart for Wyndham now. Out of dummy half they go. No one wants the ball. They're just running it across field and eventually tackled by a couple of roosters. So it's all happening for Wyndham here. They finally get a bit of possession back. Played back to Colquiel. Now to Tumavave. Gerard. Footwork at the line. Beat Baker. Still going ATG. Had Thompson there. Didn't use him. Plays the ball back to Savan. He goes himself. He's well tackled. Good defense by Brighton to sort of slow it down now. 
very frantic. Cocky all that dummy half. He goes to the right-hand side. Unicomb to McMillan. Ball playing. Beat one. Gets a late swooping offload, and Unicomb will trail to pick it up. It's still, no, he won't be picked up. It will be picked up by Green. They hammer him to the turf. You take a breath, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thompson now. Just settles it, and now it's the last play. They've lost metres in that set, the juniors. Goes to Green now. What can he conjure up? Puts it on the boot. Well picked up by Rotuva, and he puts a bit of footwork on and finds some space now. Here goes Rotuva, and tackled by Dane Spencer, but a great return by the big man. Yeah, great return by Rotuva, turning defence into attack, and the Roosters starting to explode. 12 minutes to go. They're down by eight. Wyndham have held out pretty strong, although they're... Oh, oh yeah! The crowd loved that one. Taylor loved that one. So did I. Tumavave, Gerard on many. Now it's Mackendo. Credit to Mackendo after that. He just went straight up at them. Now it goes to Baker. Baker put a bit of footwork on. Goes back to the center. Oh, look at Baker go. He's through the line. He beats one. He beats two. And they come from behind to tackle him. He just had no speed there, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> the big man. So we go to Crust now. Brighton Roosters on a roll. It goes to Tapea. Looking for Rotuva out wide, but he's not there. It's going to be fielded by Spencer. In the field of play, yes. And they wrap him up there. But a good set from Brighton. They need to keep him here. Yeah, looking for Rotuva there at the end of that kick. But he just didn't jump onto it as quick as they would have liked. If he had got down there with a bit of pace, he could have leapt for that ball and possibly made something out of it, but he didn't get there. Stanford into Graham. Good shot by Sampson Graham. They're starting to see some of this get really heavy in the guts here. Here goes O'Keefe. And Brody Baker meets him. <laughs> <laughs> wants to play the ball. It's slowed down again quite well from the Roosters. Here goes Tumavave Jarrett. Who wants him? Nakabuwai goes low, but he can't handle him. Tapai can't get him as well. Baker comes to finish it off as Mackendo went low. McIndo chasing from Marker here on Green. Green puts the kick in and straight down the throat of Rotuva. What can Rotuva do here? He might try and back himself. Yes, he does. He beats one. Just can't get away from Unicomb. Another good return from the big man. Brebner coming from the field with an ankle injury. Now we go to Rowetti. Ambrose Fenn will go back out on the park for the injured Brebner. Referee saying play on. Does he say a set restart here? Picked up by Tapia. Tapia just settles it down here. There's no one outside of him. And the referee doesn't award a set restart either. Jeez, what a set of play. What a series of events. Yeah. Nakabuwai now. Almost to the halfway line. They need to just both sides just need to settle here, try and get into their completions. It's Ambrose Fenn now. Good carry. Crust, short, Mackendo, Mackendo, look at him go! Mackendo puts a kick through, he might have been taken out, are we playing on? Brock no. Nelson there, the referee says penalty, he was taken out. He was taken out by Dane Spencer, he had to do what he had to do there, Dane Spencer, but it was a penalty every day of the week, right in front of the sticks. What about this performance from Harrison Mackendo? I tell you what, uh, after that first sort of 10 minutes where I said, we haven't seen too much of him, he's just gone, played out of his skin, Taylor. Yeah, he's played some really good football. We're just having a wait here to see it's, how it's, injured Harrison really is. Yeah, let's hope it's not too serious for Brighton here. Yeah? Because he's been one of the standout performers for them. Of course, they've lost Brebner in that last set as well. They might be down to only one or two more interchanges left here, the Roosters. Taylor, 30-22, right? Seagulls leading Brighton, eight-point deficit. Oh, no, you're not I'm kicking I'm going to ask. I'm you're gonna not ask. kicking the goal. You're not? No way. You, okay. you, cause, cause, I had to ask. Well, in the barrel <laughs> competition, you've, it's, you both get two points anyway for a draw. Uh, there's no extra time. Uh, so, no, that's not that's not going to help the Brighton Roosters in the game of the competition. I just go foot to the throat, all okay. or nothing, let's go. Because, yep. I mean, you score a try now, kick the goal or still not, regardless, you've yep. still got ten minutes to go. Um, there's still a lot of time. And as I said, a draw does nothing for you. So, trainer still with Harrison. They've got the thumbs up, though, and he might trail back to his side. We play on now. Full set of six here for Brighton. It's a big one. Final ten minutes of the match. They're down by eight. Samson Graham plays it back to Crust. Crust inside ball to Fenn. They muscle up there indeed. To Mavave, Gerard there. Crust, Nelson, Latui. Just takes the tackle there. It's a few metres short of the trial line. Rowetti at dummy half. He goes to Nelson, plays in motion, goes to Sampson Graham. Oh, well met. 
that was Malatola in the middle, I think it was, who met him. Cross now. Short play again to Fenn. Probably need to get it wide here, the Roosters. A lot of short crash plays. It's crossed again. He goes to Rowetti. Little kick through. The ball's everywhere. It's deflected. Who wants it? Who's going to pick it up? It's in the in goal. Referee says knock on Winham. Yeah, knock on Winham. Brighton will have a repeat set. What about that set from the Roosters there, Taylor? Yeah, look, uh, they're just... They're not using many options. They're just one off the ruck and just having, oh, we'll have a little go short side. And yeah. there's, there's no real consistency in where they're going. There's no plan. It just, you know, it's frantic and they need us to slow it down and execute what they know. They've been training now for, what, nearly 10 months. Uh, they just need to slow them right down, execute what they know and, and, and put their plays into, into the game. Winnie would probably be pulling his hair out the end of the field saying, <laughs> hey, what's the point of training? So a little break in play here as the trainer attends to Samson Graham, I think that is. But again, another big set coming up here for Brighton. There were, I mean, 8, 8.40 on the clock, a little bit more. They score here. They give themselves plenty of time to try and win this match. The Seagulls, however, they are holding on. They've done a good job with, with the amount of possession the Roosters have had. Short little play off the back of the scrum from many. Went the blind side. Let's have a look at the Roosters here. Goes to Nelson, now to Baker. Baker runs it forward. He got away from Adam Tumavave Gerard. Crust that dummy half. They've got numbers both sides. They go right. It's out to Tapia. Now a long ball. Touched by Wynnum. We're playing on from Mackendo. Out wide. Can the Roosters get there? No, they can't. That's great cover from the Wynnum Manly Juniors. Yeah, Dane Spencer and co. Get right across there to stop that one in the corner. I think Spencer's had a few things to say about it. They're all getting involved now. Harrison McIndo having an, an issue there with Rakeem Outer. So we'll just have a look at the replay. Attempt there. They get across. O'Keefe Outer. Yeah, I see I see what they've taken issue to there. Spencer and Outer have got right in his face and pushed him. So look, I wouldn't be surprised if the touch judge seen it, they pull it up and we find Penalty Brighton Roosters. Yeah, we got touching. They're having words now, so we could see. I don't think you'll see some. anyone get get any trouble yeah, any yeah. time in the bin, but I would not be surprised if we do see a penalty to the Brighton Roosters. Oh, we've seen a send off. Send here. off. We've seen a send off. I'm not 100 percent what for. We'll have a look. Is that Rakeem? That's Rakeem Outer. He's been sent for the game. Wow. Oh, it doesn't make a difference. Ten of the bins the same time frame, yeah. but I guess but it's it more just highlighting what happened. Yeah. Rakeem out is still mouthing off. He's still upset. Because you go straight to the judiciary for it. You do go straight to yeah. the judiciary for a send-off. So we're just having a look now. Eight minutes on the clock. Well, that's... Come on, my boy. So that's, this, this is huge here, Taylor, now for Brighton. They're, they're playing well, they're, against 12 for the rest of the match. 12 for eight minutes now. Something must have happened in there. Baker they need, now. They've, they need to score twice is what they need to do. Score twice, kick a goal, the game's theirs. So out the back to Pia. Bouncing ball. They need to be careful there. The opposition's up in his face of Latui there. What can the Roosters do against 12? A huge momentum shift in this match now for Roosters if they can get over. It's juggled by Nelson. Good bit of footwork too. He's still going, Nelson. That's great. Many now back on the inside. Can he find some tired defenders to get around? No, he can't. ATG there. They're still taking him backwards as well. They slowed it right down. Crust. Nelson. Samson Graham. They've got to go right, surely, the way that Outer was. They're going to go that way now to Pia. Out ball. Rewitty. McIndo. Back on the inside. Harrison McIndo looking for three. Can't get there. And the referee says knock on. Yeah, knock on. If he can be charged with anything there, McIndo, it's just trying too hard. He's done everything for the Roosters. We have a look at the replay. He gets so close. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to say if there was a, a win of hand in there in the end. Six minutes, 20 seconds on the clock here. You think Wynnum might go into just the sort of game plan to defend this lead, Taylor, right? 
yeah, it's going to yeah. be it's going to be a bit of a nothing set here from Winham. Just a couple of hit ups, and then they'll try to drill it as hard as they can out. Not quick to the scrum either. And the ball's oh. miraculously taking some time to get to there as well. Oh, who's there? I think it's Chris Green also having another little <laughs> walk back to the scrum. Who knows what he's doing? I reckon he's got a, ho a little hole back there, you know, just a little <laughs> hidey hole under a tuft of grass. Just flip the ball in there for a second. Back to scrum now, Stanford. Good run off the back of it as well from the centre. Gets him on the front foot early on in this set. Well, Brighton are oh, fired up. There goes Baker. Brody Baker. Graham was with him. So was Nakabuai. And ATG. Yeah. He doesn't mind a bit of fire. He'll get straight into it. <laughs> They're loving it at the moment in the middle. There's some big hits coming off as well. Who's next up? Savannah dummy half. Dispenser. Good run from Dane. Just over the 40. Oh, yeah. Big contact again on him. Samson Graham just loves it. Goes back now to Unicomb. In the air now. Rowetti seems to have gone to fullback. You're already at fullback and then you've got Mitch Ailing there on the wing. Crust at dummy half. Rituva now. Picks up a few metres. Blake Pyle with card in hand looking to come back out for Wynnum. Now Ailing, cross field trying to find some space. Yeah, he can make things down to nothing Ailing. I'd like to see him get the ball in his hands. But they need to score this set in my opinion. Nakabuai. Now it's out to Makendo. Makendo, a free reign, kicks in field, but it goes straight to Wynnum. They found the space they needed, Taylor, but the kick just didn't go to hand. Yeah, again, Makendo, he's he's in and around it, isn't he? He's been by far the best for the Roosters. Samson Gray has been good as well, but he just can't do anything more to Willie's side forward, and there just wasn't enough bright jerseys in the mix. It wasn't they the best kick, but was really there pushing up. They need to try and force an error. They know we're into the last four minutes now, so they really need something here. Savan, Unicorn, Pyle almost dropped it. It's last play. They've had a good job in defense here, Brighton. They need good kick pressure, and they need a good kick return here. Yeah, I wouldn't have mind seeing a charge down then. <laughs> well, there you go. The kick's bounced on the 50. They're going to start the set minimum past the 40. Here goes Ailing. He almost backed himself to go around them there. Plays it back to McIndo. McIndo works a short blind. That's dangerous, but he still picks up some nice meters. Oh, the middle's wide open. It's a penalty, but the middle was wide open. They need to go here. Brighton, if they are, need to tap and go. Winner Manly just holding their own in defense at the moment. Quite remarkable how this game's turned out. Nakabu wide, late offload. Ball's bouncing around. It's picked up by a rooster, now handed to Baker. Baker footwork at the line. They've got to go left. It looks like there's numbers there at the moment. Played back. Now it's Nelson. Out the back to Rowetti, to Many. Many now space in front of him. Flicked it out. Rituva can't get there. And that might just be it for the Roosters. Many flicks it out. Rituva can't quite get there. Well, if we can, ro we are rolling at Many. I thought he maybe should have just passed a bit earlier. Let's have a look again, Tara, and you can tell me what you think. To be honest, the, the, there was a bit of space on the right-hand side because Wyndham just swept all in defence and, oh, yeah, maybe it's a little, a little yeah. touch earlier, but it's so hard in the run of play. It's all good in hindsight to say maybe a little earlier, but yeah, when you're live, it's a lot harder than that. Absolutely. And now I think two minutes to go, Wyndham have held on here. They'll get the victory and essentially... Well, they're all getting up here, the Brighton Roosters trying to oh, force an error. Yeah, the win might go to the, the juniors, but I'll tell you what, the way this game's been fiery, I don't know what the plans are next week. Oh, can we commentate this one next week as well? It would be well? great. You know what? It would be great to do this again next week, It mate. would be awesome because <laughs> they have been just physical with each other, and I think they'll start the game with that fire come next Saturday as well. Pile now. So Roosters will get one more piece of play and who knows if they can score early in that this sort of set they'll need to score that. off this kick yeah. ball bouncing around now they've got to be quick to pick it up the roosters ailing gets there throws a dummy goes himself infield they do start the set 40 out from their own try line now though rewitty 
looking for space. Oh, he's hammered. Good tackle again from Wynnum. They showed a lot of grit to defend this one out. Rituva now. Oh, just no speed onto the ball. Played back to Crust. Crust. Nelson. Fenn. Time ticking down here for the Roosters into the final 40 seconds. Tapia now plays in motion, goes to Nakabuai. They've done a good job on him as well, Winham. Haven't enabled him to get too much space. Now they work a short blind again through Mackendo and puts a little kick through. The ball's bouncing around. We're playing on with the Roosters. Is this still a try or was that dropped over the try line? The referee <laughs> says it was. I think the referee was in the middle of the park. He didn't want to make a call. He was looking at the touch. He like, mate, this is on you. Yeah. I don't want to borrow this. So they won't want to get to this scrum either side, I would say. The result's done and dusted now, but quite a interesting game, Taylor Brown, to, to say the least, how it's all panned out. Yeah, very interesting game of footy camp. Both sides rocked up to play. The stages there, I thought the Roosters would gun them down, but a real gritty win for the Wynnum Juniors, defending for what looked, seemed like 15 minutes straight at the start of this yeah. half. To claim the victory and as you said mate these two sides will will meet again next week and i'm sure that one will be an absolute thriller too but they've had a good look at each other here this afternoon they've had a great look at each other this afternoon it'll be interesting to see the way that these coaches go away dissect the game and then they come back for next round but uh well win them get away with it and it might just be good night irene for the brighton rooster season camp Taylor Brown, as always, a pleasure, mate, to do the job with you. That final scoreline reads, Winner Manly 30, the Brighton Roosters 22. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast at home, and we'll see you next week for the next BRL TV Match of the Round. Thank you for your time. We'll do it all again next week.